open-ended. And isn't it wonderful to have the U.S. military protecting the investments of those Chinese investors? Isn't it time to think about national interest rather than this mythology that al-Qaeda is somehow located in Afghanistan? I think even the, uh, the think tanks here in Washington would agree that that is not, not true. Now, on the other hand, uh, we've had uh, 16, 17 days of Russian military operations against the terrorist rebels. Uh, I hate to quote a uh, sleazy fellow like Congressman Ed Royce of California, but uh, he does have some point when he I'm going to have to uh, alter his quote a little bit because his is too extreme, that the Russians have accomplished more in two weeks than the United States did in a year of bombing. Uh, and he thinks that should be blamed on Obama. Fine. Uh, but look who actually did it. This is Allen. This is John Allen, the ISISR. This is the Petraeus clique. This is General uh, Breedlove. These are other commanders who make these decisions. So. The phony war policy, uh, I don't know if this was dictated by Obama, but certainly the, uh, the role of these disgruntled, politically ambitious generals, insubordinate generals, right? The, the, uh, the people we heard talking through the voice of General McChrystal about Vice President Bite Me. Remember that? Okay, so that's, that's the view they all have. Uh, they're insubordinate, and uh, in a, you know, we have a big tradition of civilian control. This is bad news. So the Russians say that they have now done 380 targets. This is not even sorties, uh, but targets that have been hit uh, by uh, their ordinance. Uh, the uh, Assad army, the Syrian Arab army, for whom I have respect and indeed uh, admiration, uh, I learned that in the military hospital in Damascus back in uh, November of last of uh, 2011. They're advancing. The Syrian Arab army is pushing the rebels to the east out of the Homs to Hama area. Uh, and they're, they're also advancing to the north towards Aleppo. We'll be back in just a minute on World Crisis Radio. <clears throat> Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. Now, um, we obviously ought to point out what could be done. Uh, Obama is going to ha have to start acting like president of the United States. I realize this is a novel challenge for Obama, but he's got to do it. The government is slipping into the hands of these warmongers. Uh, Obama's influence apparently dwindling fast. This is what you get, of course, for appointing people like Skull and Bones Kerry or the utopian warmonger and pedant Ashton Carter, egomaniac, narcissist, and so forth. Uh, we've got to have some high-profile firings. Obama ought to know what one, two, or three people he ought to fire. I'm thinking of uh, President Ford's uh, Halloween massacre. Um, what is that? That's about uh, 40 years ago this month, I'm guessing. Right? I think it was Halloween 1975 when that happened. Right? A whole bunch of uh, very dubious people were kicked out by President Ford. Kissinger was cut down to size. Um, Schlesinger was ousted, a whole bunch of interesting things. Well, Obama needs a Halloween massacre. He needs to fire some of the leading warmongers. This woman, Samantha Power at the United Nations, is a national disgrace. She has failed, and I have a commentary uh, in today's morning briefing, and it's a commentary that I, I did for Press TV uh, on the 14th, a couple of days ago now, uh, that the United States is so churlish and so petty and so stupid above all and so devoted to terrorism that she is refusing, Samantha Power refuses to even sign a letter deploring the attack, mortar attack, I guess it is, or shelling of the Russian embassy in Damascus. She won't deplore that 
because she objects to the idea that it was a terrorist attack. And because she knows that the people who shot off those shells or mortar rounds, those people are U.S. backed, right? That's the CIA program. So we are now getting to the point where the United States government is openly, openly in favor of terrorist groups, right? And again, I wonder what's going on with those 9-11 families. Why don't they come forward and hold a press conference and say, we've had it, right? No more support for al-Qaeda. Again, uh, I'm simply basing this on what those people believe and what they have been uh, told, not necessarily the reality of it, but there's still plenty of reason for anybody with any standing in the public eye to come forward and say, no, we don't want uh, that to uh, to happen. No more support, not one penny more and not one bullet and not one rifle for al-Qaeda anywhere. So now uh, the other thing is, and this is uh, the theme of this conference in Rome that we're going to get to. Let me just jump ahead to that. In October, and I believe into November also, we're going to have a very big NATO exercise centered in the Mediterranean and to some extent in the North Atlantic. It's called Trident Juncture 2015. Trident Juncture, one of the biggest military exercises in many decades. There are competing estimates of how far back you have to go. Some say since 1945, some say since uh, 2002, somewhere in there. 36,000 NATO and satellite or puppet troops, 36,000 NATO troops, 140 aircraft, 60 naval vessels, 30 nations. And it's designed to show the transformation of NATO as a response to the hybrid warfare, so-called, the hybrid warfare uh, deployed by Russia and Putin in the Ukraine. So they say we have to get ready for that. Under French Air Force General Denis Mercier, Supreme Allied Commander for Transformation, so SACT, uh, this is uh, in a uh, press conference roundtable that he uh, held. Now, look, this drill has to be called off. All the people out there who have learned the lessons of the drills, right? we know. That when the drill goes live, when the drill is taken live, that's when the false flag occurs. That's when the Gulf of Tonkin occurs. I'm thinking about Hilex 75. That was denounced in the German press as a back door to a confrontation with the Soviet Union. And then even better documented, Able Archer 83, which was uh, a, a similar drill, similar to Hilex, an escalation towards nuclear war with the Soviets. The Soviets saw it. They were so impressed by the realism, they thought it was the real thing because that's how these things are done. And therefore, they went to uh, their top uh, level of uh, readiness, right? red alert, and so forth. So uh, this is now going to be the subject, and let me just get this in here uh, while we can. Um, it's going to be in uh, Rome on Monday the 26th of October, uh, and it's going to be in, it's from 10 o'clock in the morning till six o'clock at night. It's, it's a very impressive international conference uh, organized, I think, uh, from my point of view anyway, by uh, Giulietto Chiesa, former member of the European Parliament, a friend, good friend, um, who has done a great deal. Uh, and uh, he has a fine staff. He works with uh, with, with people like Pino Cabras of megachip.info. This is an excellent um, operation. So they're putting this together, and the idea is um, it's time to break up NATO, and it's time to act against war. So here's some people. And if you look at the people that they've invited, it's an extremely impressive uh, list. Now, not all can come, but it is a work in progress. The, the confirmations are continuing to come in. So that's where I'm going to be on Monday, the 26th of October. And let me just tell you where, if you're uh, thinking about dropping by, that would be uh, the uh, Centro Convegni Cavour, okay? Centro Convegni Cavour, so the 
conference center, uh, the, the Kavur Conference Center, via Kavur, C-A-V-O-U-R, right, 50A, Rome, Italy, October 26th, 2015, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And you can find this on various websites. We can find it on mine. You go to tarpley.net and then follow some of that stuff, and you will be on your way. So um, there's a whole bunch of details about Sicily in here, and I also would uh, would call your attention to today's uh, briefing uh, where I, I write – some stuff about how, how you know what I've said here about Hilex seventy five about Able Archer eighty three how the drills go live. So that's uh, the other thing to do. So Obama needs to make some high profile sackings, high profile firings are needed to reestablish executive authority over this government. Otherwise, the neocon faction. And this is people who go off the reservation, right? Commit treason, whatever you want to call it. They're happy to do that. They want war. That's all they know. They're one-trick ponies. Had enough? Did you have enough of them in the Iraq war? Well, if you did, you better show it right now and do something. Anybody who can get on Twitter, anybody go on Facebook, put it out some way or other and uh, and get to work. Um so that, I think, would be at least a, a first uh, approximation. The other thing, of course, is put the pressure on these peace fakers, right? The peace groups here in the United States are a disaster. So we need them to mobilize also. Okay, back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. And now we have a special report from the sinecure of world politics these days, which is Syria and specifically Damascus. We're very happy to be joined once again by our good friend and esteemed colleague, uh, Thierry Maison. Thierry is the uh, leader of the Voltaire Network, and uh, he has been living in Damascus for the past four years, approximately. He's probably the only Western uh, reporter to have done that. Uh, he has been uh, a consultant to the Syrian government. And the thing that I think we can focus on today is we hear a lot about the military campaign, right? The Russian military campaign, how that is fitting together. Uh, and I think Thierry has an unparalleled view of that, which I would be very happy for him to uh, to lay out for us now. So Thierry, welcome, and please go ahead and uh, and give us that rundown. Thank you, Webster. Um... So, since uh, now uh, three weeks, the Russian militaries are deployed in Syria, and they began to bomb the jihadists from all the different groups, of course Daesh, but also Al-Qaeda or al Sham. Uh, and, uh, in fact, nobody knows w- what is really happening now in Syria, because there is something totally new, totally different from the past. Uh, the Russian militaries have deployed a special system to scramble, to jam all the communication in Syria. So right now, uh, all the military communication, the, the radars, the, the satellites, everything is jammed, is scrambled. And the result is that uh, NATO don't know what is happening inside Syria since three weeks. Mm. So this is very, very important, because this means that uh, Russia has a new weapon able to uh, stop all the communication system of NATO. And this means that uh, Russia now is the main military power in the world. You, you understand what I am saying? Because right now, NATO is totally blind, and uh, uh, if NATO tries to do something inside Syria, they can't do it. So at the beginning, when the Russian military is entered in uh, in Syria, there was an agreement between Russia and the U.S. 
to um, destroy the jihad.